So now we have red, and we're going to start with Act of Treason, which makes some sense given all of the sacrifice stuff that we saw in black earlier. Um, so if you're in red-black, Rakdos, Act of Treason gets significantly better. On the other hand, like some of those sacrifice outlets would be hard to make use of in a turn where you've also cast a three mana sorcery already. So some of them would be fine, like the one that didn't cost any mana and uh, was just tapped to sack two creatures. Um, being able to, to have one of those be an act of treason creature could be pretty good there. Um, so, okay, there's that. Uh, constructed, this card basically never sees play. It's always around, so I wouldn't expect it. Act of treason outside the sacrifice synergies. Yeah, if you're super aggressive or you need a way to bust through your opponent's large creatures out of the sideboard. Maybe you play it sometimes, but you don't usually don't play it too much. Amplifier, let's talk about Constructed first. Um, yeah, four mana, you need to have a huge creature if it's only going to be stats and Constructed. Basically, you want it to be a 20-20. Um, there are a couple of cards in Standard that you can put in your deck to make this a 20-20. The problem is, if you're trying to do that combo, first of all, the thing's just going to die to any kind of removal under the sun. Second of all, you can't have very many creatures if you're going to set it up being large enough, which means you have fewer other creatures for your opponent to use your removal on, which means this is going to die to every removal under the sun because it won't have spent it already. Third of all, you need some payoff for it being so large. Maybe you can attack, otherwise you're going to need some way to give it some kind of evasion. Um, in a lot of cases, or you can use something like Thud to kill them, so they can maybe counter. And yeah, well, if you're trying to do this combo deck, you're probably going to want multiple of these in your deck, which means that even if you have, you know, there's two other 10-10 or bigger cards in the format, you have four copies of both of those and four of these, there's like a 3 in 11 chance, so that's like 27.5%, a little over 27%, that instead of hitting one of your Galtas or Impervious Great Worms, you hit another Amplifier and you have a 2-2. Two -two. So, okay, uh, I don't see this really happening, but it could be a meme deck. On the other hand, uh, in Limited, well... The biggest negative against it in Limited is that it blocks very poorly. It also dies to a lot of removal. But maybe it's playable if you're aggressive enough. If you reveal a two power creature, it's going to be a four. Uh, well, if you reveal a two two, it's going to make it a four four, right? Um, which is okay for four mana. It's like a four four for four is pretty good, but a lot of that's from blocking. If you're only attacking, it's less good, but it's still pretty okay. You want to reveal a 3-3 three, three or bigger generally, though, which makes it a 6-6, six, six, which is quite good and limited, but it's just not going to be reliable. Um, so maybe this is playable sometimes in limited, but I think in general I would like to stay away from it. Burn Bright is like Trumpet Blast, but it always does your creatures instead of attacking creatures, which is mostly upside. Um, there's been the odd occasion where I've comboed Trumpet Blast with, like, uh, Smite the Monstrous before. But mostly this is upside. Trumpet Blast is usually not that great, though, and I don't think there's enough of a token or go-wide deck in this format for this card to be super good. But um, maybe you can play it sometimes. Uh, again, only in Limited. Burning Tree Vandal, 3-mana 2-1 Riot, so it's either a 2-1 Haste or a 3-2. When it attacks, you get to Rummage. Um, yeah, this seems like a quite a reasonable card. 3 mana, 3-2, three, and you get a Rummage when it attacks. Probably is going to trade the first time it does attack, but being able to Rummage is okay. 3-mana, um, 2-1 Haste, you get a Rummage out of it. Um, yeah, it's not a very good body, but you know maybe you get to get in an attack when your opponent hasn't left any blockers back because it has Haste and... You get a, sec, a couple of rummages or something, or you get a couple damage, and then you get a block with it or something. Um, the flexibility is nice. It's like a mediocre card, though. I wouldn't be unhappy if I cut it. 
Um, Cavalcade of Calamity. Also looking for a go-wide deck. And I'm not exactly sure. There aren't that many token makers, I don't think, in this format. There is one, and we're going to get to it soon. But I don't think there's that many small creatures. Maybe there is some way to do something with this in standard. Um, right, red, white had that uh, uh, white, basically the white weenie deck, and you can make that have like a lot more one drops that have one power and use this to do extra damage or something, maybe. I don't really think that's good because you'd rather just play better creatures. Um, I guess there are a couple of one drops in black. There's like the one two that hits them for one when it attacks already. And so this pairs with those kind of okay. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it. Um, maybe there's a token deck that you can make a lot of tokens with with this card as well. Maybe that there's, but I don't really see it in standard. In limited, there's like one token maker. If you have enough copies of that, then this is okay. But in general, I, I don't really think this is a very good card. So let's move on to Clamor Shaman. Um, yeah, this effect uh, is typically pretty good, especially in limited. Um, now the Riot, that makes this have a bit smaller of a body than we normally see. So we've seen Goblin Heal Cutter and On Crop Crasher. Those were both three twos with haste. This is either gonna be a two two without haste or a one one with haste. Um, now the not being able to block is a pretty big game and it is a Goblin, I guess that might be relevant in standard, but I don't really think this is statted well enough for standard. Um, but Heal Cutter sometimes sees play, I guess. Um, even in modern, it's seen a little play, although I think that's rather dubious. Um, and On Crop Crasher saw a decent amount of play, so this might see play. Uh, but I think more it's going to be a limited card, and the problem is that it's usually going to die the first time it attacks, unless they've left nothing back, or only one creature back, that you haste this in and attack, and then just have the threat of um, attacking with it. And I guess the creature that is blocking this isn't blocking one of your other creatures. Um, I think this card is going to be okay, but not as good as those other cards were. Those cards were very good, though, so it's still probably fine. Dagger Caster, this is a card I mentioned in response to that black uh, death touch trick. Um, so it's a four mana two three that when it enters the battlefield it pings your opponent and every creature they control. Um, maybe if you play enough of the death touchy stuff in a standard deck between this and Goblin Chain Whirler, which is such a better card than this, you can have like eight copies of both halves of this Plague Wind thing, at least in um, creature matchups. So maybe you see it there? This card looks too bad for that though. In limited, you're mostly wanting to use this to finish off creatures post-combat, um, as well as kill some X1s. Not great though. Um, you really want to be able to finish off at least one creature with this. Um, I guess it also, right, damages your opponent, so that does enable um, Spectacle, but it's kind of expensive for that, so... Yeah, I'm not super high on this card um, in general, but you can maybe make it worth a card, usually. Um, but not much more, I don't think. Deface, pure sideboard card in standard... I guess if the Defender deck or some more artifacty based deck emerges, we're not really seeing those now. But if they emerge, then this is a nice card to have. One mana destroy an artifact at sorcery speed is pretty good. Um, not going to have any impact in bigger formats, I don't think, because nobody plays walls. Uh, I guess some people play like Wall of Roots in modern, but whatever, you're still going to play Shattering Spree over this. Um, Electra Dominance, so this card is very interesting. Let's talk about it in Constructed, for, or let's talk about it in Limited first, where let's say we cast this for 6 mana, so X equals 4, 
if we can cast a four drop from it, we were going to cast that four drop anyway. Um, so effectively, we've played two mana on this and gotten four damage to any target out of it, which is a really good rate. Actually, this is also true in Constructed. Um, now, you need a four drop for that to work. Um, the plus side that makes it even better in that case is that um, you get to ignore the timing restrictions on casting that card. So if your four drops a creature and you can play this in combat, like after they've declared attackers, you get to kill a thing and you play a four drop creature down, you get to eat another creature. It can be a two for one um, while also being an efficient spell. So that's like the best case scenario, right? The worst case scenario is, well, even if you don't have anything to play in hand, six mana for four damage isn't that bad. Five mana for three damage isn't that bad. Those are both like kind of bad rates. They're a mana more than you'd really expect to play, even in limited. Um, so they're kind of bad rates. Um, if you have something lower on curve to play, you play this for six mana and you play a two drop, you're paying four mana for four damage. That's below rate. If you play a three drop, three mana for three damage is basically rate and limited. It's going to be a very good card in limited. Playing it fairly and constructed like this, I could see it seeing play. I could also, there's a green ramp spell in this set that really wants you to be playing with instance. So I could see it in that, in that kind of a shell as well. Um, or if you're just holding up I guess you want to hold up a counter spell or this, maybe? But it's not effic efficient until you start to play it for high amounts of mana. And it's really not efficient until you start to play it for high amounts of mana and cast something reasonably expensive, even if it's not quite as expensive as you can from your hand as well. In limited, like, just you're happy to play this all the time in constructed you're going to need something better going on for you the other thing this can do in constructed though is it lets you play spells that don't have casting costs so there's a few of those most of them are um, suspend spells that you just normally would just have to suspend um, which have been cascaded into for quite a while and then we've seen some as foretold versions of those decks more recently this card can slot in <coughs> to those decks um, you can't cascade if you have this in your deck though or sometimes you're going to cascade into this anyway if you do so between as foretold and this maybe you can do something I'm not going to go too into depth in it there other people I'm sure will do that Feral Maka is a bear it's fine um, there aren't actually that many bears in this set so it's totally fine playable in, in limited um, nothing to write home about, though. If you need a two-drop, it's there for you. Obviously not seeing any play in Constructed. Flames of the Raised Boar deals four damage to target creature and opponent controls, and if you control a creature with power four or greater, it deals two damage to all the other creatures they control. So, in limited, six mana for four damage. A little bit below rate, but it's okay. If you can activate this even some reasonable fraction of the time, though, Pyroclasming only your opponent is pretty good. Um, so I think this card is going to be pretty good, but six mana is enough that it's not going to be amazing, especially because there's at least some cards that have more than four toughness in this set that this won't deal with. You really want your six mana removal spell to deal with most. Gates of Blaze. Now this is a really big gate payoff. It deals X damage to every creature where X is the number of gates you control. So in limited, I'm not actually sure that this is worth it. You need to have a lot of gates. You need to be basically playing like, I'm going to draft almost every gate I can find, which I think is a little bit hard to do, um, right? There's 24 guild gates open. There's 24 packs in a draft. 24 guild gates get opened in every draft, um, plus gateway plazas, right? So that makes it like 26, 27, something like that. Um, so if you get your share of them, you get three or four. If you get double your share of them, you get six or seven. If you want to cast this on turn four, the chances of you having even two gates aren't that great, even if you have six or seven. 
Um, although they're okay, like there's a decent chance you're going to have two gates at that point. Um, more than two? It's pretty unlikely though. And so three mana for two damage to everything. Hey, we saw that before. If you're the gates deck, you want to wield this card. Um, and you want to have a lot of gates. Now, if you have like 15 gates, okay, that's unrealistic. Let's say you have 10 gates. I think I've got to 10 gates in one of my guilds of Ravnica drafts. Um, now, just over half your lands and a quarter of your cards are gates. On turn four, you're going to have seen about 10 cards, 10 or 11 cards. One of them is going to be this. So you're going to have about three. There's some chance you want to play this later, though. You can hold it for a while. So you play it on turn six or something. And you can get in for maybe four damage to everything on this. It's still hard to make it like a full wrath. Um, having said all that, that's limited. you got to do a lot of work to make it okay. But it can be good if you have a ton of gates. And hopefully you can wheel it if you're in that deck. In Constructed... If there is a gate deck in Constructed, I absolutely expect this to be a big part of it. Because gates are slow. They enter the battlefield tapped. Um, they're really slow. And so you need some way to catch up against the aggressive decks. And so four copies of this card that can sweep them, um, and eventually sweep them really big, uh, I think is going to be really important in that deck. Having said that, I'm not really sure that there is a gates deck. There aren't. I don't think quite enough payoffs, but there's a few things we're going to see later on that maybe it's not the most insane thing ever. I certainly don't think it's going to be a high tier deck, but if you're looking for a fun kind of casual, maybe FNM deck, maybe there's something there. It's at least worth looking at if you're on a budget, I think. Gore Clan Wrecker. Four mana, two, two, Menace Riot. Yeah, I don't think this is that great even in Limited. Um, 4 mana, 3-3 three, three menace is only okay. 2-2 two, two menace, haste for 4, does not strike me as particularly good. Um, the optionality obviously helps a little bit, but I'm still not enthused by this card. It's not the most embarrassing thing to play, but I would usually try to not play it, I think. Goblin Gathering, yeah. So, 2 tokens for 3 mana is not something I'm particularly happy about in Limited. Um, we had Sworn Companions last set. That wasn't even that great. And it gave them lifelink, and there was Convoke. Um, now, we've seen some amount of token payoffs in red in this set, but it's not a lot. Um, if you have two copies of this in Limited, you're still unlikely to get both copies in a game. So that doesn't help that much. If you have like three or four or five copies, then I'd start to be somewhat interested. You know, three goblins tokens for three mana I am interested in. Obviously anything more than that is actually quite good. Um, I'm not really seeing this C play. Let me talk about Constructed. Now Constructed, you're, obviously if you're going to play this, you're going to jam four. Um, is there some way to get this into your graveyard? Um, some kind of self-mill or something, I'm not really sure. I don't really see it, and the payoff isn't that big, right? If you're just getting a Hordling Outburst as a payoff, it's not worth doing the work for, I don't think. If you're getting four or five goblins as the payoff, then maybe that's worth a little bit of work, but I think there's too much work to do, at least right now. Um, but it's worth keeping in mind, I guess. Gravel Hide Goblin, 2 mana, 2 1. Goblin Pikers are fine. They're not exciting. Um, if you're in Gruel, this card looks very good because the ability to pump it, and particularly just the threat to be able to pump it, um, and then they don't block, and then you don't pump it, and you play a, a creature post combat, looks pretty good. Um, it's not amazing, or right? if it were a 2 2 with this ability, it'd be a lot better because there's just going to be enough 3 power creatures that. They're just going to block anyway. If they have a 3-3, three, three, they block, and then you have to pay 4 mana to make a trade, which isn't that great for you usually. But um, very playable card in Gruul and begrudgingly playable outside of it. Obviously never doing anything outside of uh, Limited. Immolation Shaman, 
does not look good to me. Maybe you can play it in limited against, like, okay, two mana one three isn't that bad, and if there's enough adapt or whatever going on, then it deals a tiny bit extra damage. But it's only a tiny amount. The pump ability, yeah. Um, that makes it a lot more interesting in limited. It's a two mana one three that you can pay five mana to give plus three plus three in menace until end of turn is probably just totally playable in limited. So this card is totally playable in limited, but it's not super exciting. It's only pretty good because uh, that top part of text isn't doing that much. It's like a B minus in limited, I'd say. Um, in constructed, we saw a card similar to this in Amonkhet. It got a lot of hype and it didn't really do anything. And I expect basically a lot of the same for this. If there's something that's going crazy, that there's a lot of activated abilities, then um, yeah, this is a safety valve, but I don't expect it to see much play. Light up the stage, on the other hand, I expect this card to be very, very, very good. Um, you do really want to get a spectacle with it, but you get two turns. It's very close to draw two for one mana, um, if you can hit them reliably. I expect a standard mono rec deck to be all about this card. It, well, not all about this card, but it will jam four for sure. Uh, mono red aggressive deck. Um, I expect that it might even see some play in modern burn. Um, it's not quite super fast for modern burn, but uh, if you're a little bit worried about getting grinded out, um, or you know you want to be able to be very consistent by turn four or five to have enough stuff or a little bit more than enough stuff to kill an opponent in Modern Burn. This card seems reasonable to think about there. Um, I usually try to build Modern Burn to be a very fast goldfish deck and this doesn't really help you goldfish much, but okay. Um, and then Legacy Burn, I actually think would be more interested in this than Modern because the card advantage thing tends to be a bigger deal in Legacy than in Modern. And I think this could definitely see some amount of play in Legacy Burn. On the other hand, Legacy Burn isn't that great of a deck, so eh? Um, yeah. Uh, it's very, well not very, it's marginally possible that even without Spectacle or without much expectation of Spectacle, this could see some amount of play in other decks, but yeah, I don't think it's quite good enough for that. We had Act on Impulse. Now that needed more mana because you could only use it that turn. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it, but okay. Mirror March looks like a looks like an EDH card mostly to me. Too expensive to really do much in other formats. Um, obviously, it's better with Enter the Battlefield triggers, but uh, the big problem is you make one token on average, and we've had some other cards that were kind of similar to that. This card's really expensive. Um, the problem is some of that average is based on you hitting like 10 creatures, you know, one in a thousand times or something. Or hitting five extra creatures, one in um, 30 times. It's not even that few. But five extra creatures, well, I guess there are some cases where you were almost surely losing and the five extra creatures helps you it's usually more going to be like overkill. Um, so the variance away from the average, I think is bad for you in general. And it's so expensive to start with. Rixmati Reveler, I wanna talk about uh, mostly as a two, two for two. I mean, it's, it's not the best part of the card for sure, but the two, two for two that rummages ETB. Um, first of all, if you're empty handed, it's just a two mana two, two that draws a card which is perfectly fine. It's pretty good, actually. Um, it's even okay rate for Constructed in that case. Um, just rummaging, um, yeah, it's perfectly perfectly fine and limited for sure. 2-2 two, two ETB rummage is, is fine. Now, it, it, I will mention that the discarding is mandatory, and since you're discarding first, then it can be a negative thing, I guess, but it usually won't be. Um, yeah, and then sometimes you're going to be able to play it for four and do the Reveler thing um, of discarding your hand and draw three cards. 
I think you shouldn't count on that too much because you do need to mostly be empty handed, have the four mana, appreciate the extra cards and be casting this. So if you're not at all interested in the 2-2 side, I don't think this card is worth playing. But I could see playing a few of them, and they can't really clog your hand too much because the, the front side isn't too bad. I could see playing some of them in, say, standard. I don't really see it in older formats. It's just not enough. Rubble Reading is a sideboard card I expect to never get sideboarded in. Uh, the Scry 2 just doesn't do enough. Rubble Belt Recluse, now this is a card, kind of card that I tend to like a lot. It's so big that being forced to attack each turn of Fable does not strike me as that much of a downside. There's basically not cards in the set that are going to eat it. Now, there's some cards, there's a couple of cards, like the one one in a black, one two death touch afterlife card that will trade very favorably with it. But there's not even that many of those. It's very large, and you're mostly wanting to attack with it anyway. You do get to block with it one turn because it doesn't have haste, or even if it did, you could play it post-combat. Um, so you get to block with it once. It's very large, and uh, I think usually it's it's just going to trade for something big, something good. So yeah, I, I think this card is for five mana. This is the kind of five drop I want to be playing, at common at least. Um, Rumbling Ruin. So this one cares about plus one, plus one counters. And I haven't figured out how many plus one, plus one counters you're really going to have on your creatures. Red has Riot. Green has Riot and Adapt. Blue has Adapt. Um, my guess is you'll usually have zero to three. Um, at which point this ETB effect helps some particularly against like Orzov, or maybe against like um, Azorius, but it's not that great. And six mana six six is fine. The ETB is a nice little bonus. So, okay, this is, this is a card I can see playing, and I probably will usually play in my limited decks. You'll know when it's gonna be great, usually. It's usually only going to be pretty decent, though. Um, so it's a 6-drop. I won't be unhappy to play, but it's not like what I'm necessarily looking for in a 6-drop. Scorchmark. Uh, yeah, so this is the cheap removal spell. 2 mana just for a shock is... Yeah, it's okay. Um, you probably play one or two of these. Um, there's enough small stuff that I think it's probably worth it. Uh, although there isn't that much small stuff that's great to kill in this format. There, the fact that it exiles helps you deal with a lot of the afterlife stuff, which is the small stuff that you wouldn't otherwise want to kill. So most decks will have enough small stuff that it's worth playing a couple of these, but I wouldn't go too overboard. Skargan Hellkite. Yeah, obviously it's a bomb in limited 5 mana 5, 5 flyer, or 5 mana 4, 4 flyer haste. Both are very good and limited. Um, the the activated ability is really good and limited, um, as it's an activated ability. In Constructed, yeah, I'm not really sure how much better this is even than Demanding Dragon. I'm also not sure what's going on with this art. Like, this is the mouth, and what is this thing? It's like part of the tail of another something? I don't... This is its tail, right? What is this appendage? I don't understand. There's like another thing here. What is this going on? These scales? I'm not totally following this art. Anyway, whatever. Um, in Constructed, yeah, 5 mana, 4, 4, Flying Haste, we've seen be good on like Storm Breath Dragon. We saw the Exerty one that you could, you could uh, Glory Bringer, right? That was good. Um, we have Demanding Dragon right now. The activated ability is a lot less good in Constructed because, first of all, you need to take the plus one, plus one counter or put a plus one, plus one counter on it some way in order to make it work. And then how often are you really, like, playing with this card where it's in play for multiple turns and can act 
activate like and you're not winning anyway that you need to activate this ability I guess it comes up some but I don't know that it comes up a lot the modality definitely helps obviously like all these other riot cards um, but I'm just not entirely sold on it really being quite good enough for constructed play um, it kind of matches up well kind of against uh, Rekindling Phoenix. If you put the counter on it, you can attack, and if they block, which they normally could do, right, then you can activate the ability to kill the token and it's not coming back, which means they basically can't block. Um, and they can't attack with it into this if you put the counter on as well. On the other hand, you need 12 mana to actually kill the Rekindling Phoenix with this ability. So that seems tough. Um, I guess if you have some kind of a one mana bolt, then you can kill it and then spend four more mana to kill the token and ping them. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, the other problem in standard is that I expect between Lyra and some of the other big flyers, we, we have the Doom Whisperer, or whatever. This might just not be the king of the skies often enough that, uh, that that's going to hurt it a lot. And while maybe you can activate the ability to make it trade with Doom Whisperer, they're a pretty big mana disadvantage to you, and they get to surveil or whatever, um, you got to do something special to make this beat Lyra. All right, anyway, let's move on. Um, skewer the critics. They're absolute madmen. Um, now, I realize that uh, when I'm saying this, I'm kind of being critical of R&D, for which they might skewer me. Um, yeah. But, uh, well, it is a sorcery. If it were an instant, I would really call them madmen. Absolute madmen. But as a sorcery, this is basically better than Rift Bolt, for most cases, I think. I have played a decent amount with Modern Burn, and the thing that I really thought would put it over the top was another Lightning Bolt. And we kind of got that a couple sets ago with Wizards Lightning, but Burn isn't really running enough Wizards for Wizards Lightning to be reliable. It is running enough ways to enable Spectacle for Spectacle to be reliable. Now it's slightly awkward with Monastery Swift Spear, right? If I have, I have to cast my other Lightning Bolt at Sorcery Speed, and then I get to play this pre-combat, and then I get to attack with my Monastery Swift Spear and have it be pumped. But okay, whatever, it doesn't matter that much. Having an extra set of Lightning Bolts is huge. What that deck really wants is a lot of Lightning Bolts, particularly in Modern. Um, it's probably much less effectual in like Legacy Burn, but in Modern Burn, um, being able to replace, you know, like Skullcrack or something, is a, you're going to keep Skullcrack in the sideboard. But being able to replace it main deck with this card, saving a mana, is just going to make the turn three kills so much more possible. Um, I, I think an extra set of bolts, you're going to, you're definitely going to be able to, I think you were actually close already, be able to design a burn deck such that it goldfishes turn three well over 50% of the time. I think it was a little over 50% before um, now you're going to be over 50%, maybe even in front of a little disruption. Um, is that the best burn deck out there? Maybe it isn't, but this card is going to see play in Modern Burn. Um, it could replace Rift Bolt, it could replace Skullcrack, it could replace maybe some of the other two mana things. Um, it's just, it just seems like a very strong card. And then in Standard, um, the Mono Red deck getting another really efficient burn spell. Obviously, you have to enable Spectacle for it to be really efficient, but if you're not enabling Spectacle, you can, you know, hold this for a later turn, or eventually, like, you just cast it for three. Um, and Jeepers Creepers, um, that Mono Red deck looks really strong to me. Um, it was already pretty strong, but, uh, yeah, between this and uh, Light Up the Stage and... Uh, yeah, I just expect a super aggressive red deck to be really hard to deal with in the standard format. Um, also, it's obviously great and limited. Um, even for three mana, it's just a very efficient card and limited, and then sometimes you got to play it for one. Yeah. Um, Smeltwort Ignis. 
Um, so this is probably okay in, well, it's, it's pretty good and limited, right? Two minute two one is already fine or fine-ish. And then the ability is obviously face up, but you know, you can do it sometimes to get your act of treason. This is how I would want to play act of treason rather than the actual act of treason. Sometimes you have to just pay five for it to get them out of nowhere, but whatever, right? Like it can be a creature when you need it to be a creature. Um, and particularly with those sacrifice outlets we talked about earlier, this is going to be better. Um, however, I don't think it's super great, and I don't think it's going to see any play in Constructed. In Cons, we had Jeering Instigator, which was very similar to this card, and that didn't really see any Constructed play, and it actually wasn't even that good and limited, although I think the differences that Cons has from a normal set is going to make this a little better. But I don't think it's going to be busted or anything and limited, only pretty good. Spear Spewer is really weird. Hits both players, so you damage yourself as well. You really need to enable Spectacle. This will get there for you. And I guess maybe you could play this in some kind of a Goblin Reds hyper-aggressive deck in Standard, where you assume you're going to be more aggressive than your opponent, so the damage to you doesn't matter that much. But ooh, I don't know about that. Um, it's also a defender for that minor sub-theme, but I'm not really seeing this card, and I don't think it's very good. You don't want to enable Spectacle that much. Um, Spike Wheel Acrobat. 4 mana 5-2 is usually, like, if you have to play it, it's not the worst thing ever, but you don't want to. Sometimes you get it for 3. It's a lot better for 3, but I think 3 mana 5-2 isn't that great. Um, we had three mana four two or four one a few times, and it's usually not. It's usually fine. Um, that you have to jump through a hoop for this, I think, means it's going to be like sometimes you can play it, but you'd rather cut it because yeah, it just trades for two drops mostly. But the thing I will say for it is, if your opponent is like stumbling and they don't have a two drop and they don't have a three drop, and you're on the play, you get in with your two drop and you play this, you're suddenly doing a lot of damage to them. It's going to be really hard for them to stabilize. So that is something for it. Um, the five power helps there, but it doesn't seem like a great card. Storm Strike. Yeah, it's red for an instant. Uh, target creature gets plus one, plus oh, and first strike until end of turn. And you get to scry one. So we've seen this card before without the scry one, and it was already totally fine um, and limited. Um, Again, I, I, I don't really expect this to see play outside of Limited, but uh, yeah, this is just a good trick in Limited. So we've seen a few good tricks in Limited already. Um, so do watch out for them. Um, yeah, I'm going to play this most of the time in my red decks in Limited. A copy, maybe two. Um, and as we saw, there was no really big red removal spell in this set. So... Um, like, this trick may be how you're getting through some of the green creatures. Um, in fact, we haven't seen that many big removal spells overall, so keep that in mind. Apparently, you have Tin Street Dodger. One mana, one, one haste. It's a goblin, which is a relevant type. Um, and you can pay red to make it unblockable this turn, except by creatures with Defender, which I guess might come up. There might be some Defenders, but... Uh, don't expect it to a lot. If that defender deck is good in standard, then that will make this a little bit worse. I do expect this to be a standard player, um, or at least reasonably likely. Just any one mana one one haste almost, I would, like Raging Goblin. Was Raging Goblin the hasty one? I think so. I would almost expect to see play in this format because there is so much spectacle that you want to be doing. Being able to play the, pay the extra red for this to basically make it unblockable so that makes it a lot better, and I think makes this legitimately a card that I'm reasonably happy to play in my hyper-aggressive mono-red standard deck. Um, yeah, so that's red, and uh, check back soon for the next installment, which will be green.